you're a wild food enthusiast like me, you probably know the thrill of discovery and finding out that a plant you've passed by every day without noticing is actually edible. And then the shock and forlornness when it turns out, no, it's related, but substanceless and unbearably bitter. Kind of like receiving a balloon at the town festival, only for your brother to pop it and feed it to your pet turtle. But then it turns out another plant you thought was a fake poisonous version of the real plant you were comparing this other plant to, in trivial senseless hope, is actually pretty good. That's, that's basically where I'm at when it comes to wild cucumbers. So, let's talk about those then, I guess. So this here is a patch of wild cucumber and, well, you can imagine my disappointment a few years ago when I realized that while it's called a cucumber, it's not even in the same genus as the cultivated cu cucumber. And it's not good eating either. Like this, if you feel it, it's got quite a lot of air in it, not much body to it. If you taste it, it's, well, pretty bitter, not, not good eating. That said, though, it is also a cucurbit, like a cucumber, which the cucurbits, that's a family of, of plants which includes squash, melons, zucchinis, uh, stuff like that. If you're a gardener, you can probably notice some similarities with the plants here. With a few exceptions, plants in this family tend to be vines, and they have thick, hairy stems that tend to die back in the frost, and if you cut those stems, you tend to see a cross-section that's kind of pentagon-shaped. They also notably have separate male and female flowers, and you can see that here. These stalks here are what's known as racemes. They contain the male flowers, which are the ones that produce the pollen. At the bottom here, you can see the individual female flowers, which is where the seeds develop when the pollen is received, and thus also where the fruit will develop. You can actually see the just a little spiky start of a cucumber there. The males they'll just fall off and die once they're finished giving their pollen. The fruit is also distinctive here though. Uh, biologically it's categorized as a type of berry called a pepo, which is distinguished from other berries by its hard outer skin here, and seeds which don't have dividing walls between them. While it wasn't used for food, it apparently did have quite a number of uses by the First Nations for medicine from, I believe, analgesics, kidney treatments, and even sometimes love potions. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any recent clinical trials on this, but if you're into that sort of research, maybe well worth trying out. One word of caution, though, too. I don't advise self-medicating with plants, especially so if you're not certain of the plant's identity. And, well, I couldn't find any information specific to the dangers of while these wild cucumbers, there are a number of other cucurbits around which are definitely not friendly towards the insides and can look pretty similar to wild cucumbers. Case in point, that plant over there. A lot of people around here assume this is some sort of wild cucumber and it grows all over a lot of the shelter belts here. It is also a cucurbit, but very much not a cucumber. <laughs> it's some type of bryony, I believe. I think Brionia alba which, if so, that's interesting, because I couldn't find any reported sightings of that in Manitoba. It's apparently pretty invasive, too. But despite having moderately appealing berries and tantalizingly crunchy roots, it's, well, definitely not tummy safe. Even at low doses, it can cause vomiting, convulsions, kidney damage, and a few other things that would ruin a good picnic. If I'm wrong with my IDing and it's actually Brionia dioica, we can add paralysis to that list too. So long story short, foraging 101. If you're not certain what it is, don't eat it. Hello. There's some kids sneaking up on me with walkie-talkies. That's what you get for filming in a small town, I guess. Now, this is a native plant here in North America, but in other parts of the world it is invasive, notably in some parts of Europe. It can be interesting to look at why certain plants are more invasive than others. Generally a plant is invasive if when it's moved to a new range, 
in that new range it has less predators to attack it and less competition to deal with so it spreads kind of unchecked and that's not exactly the case with these wild cucumbers now in any given population of a particular species you'll have a, a fair bit of variability in the genetics of each individual so maybe one individual's genes code for more vigorous root growth or one has slightly different chemical compounds in its leaves or any of various things like that and some of these can be definite minorities within the larger population like say 10 plants within a million but even those can sometimes turn out to be quite advantageous if you see a change in the environment, maybe a new disease is introduced, or maybe it's moved to a new environment where the conditions are different. And this wild cucumber is a good example of that. Typically, each one of these fruits contains four seeds. And when this plant dries out in the fall, so does the fruit, opening up as it does so, and you're left with this dry husk, and the seeds can just fall right out. These seeds have a pretty decent survival rate and new plants sprout every year. However, this doesn't work quite as well everywhere it tries to grow. A study was done last year in Poland where these cucumbers have apparently become invasive and it turns out that the rodents there just love to eat these cucumber seeds. And so much so that for these regular seeds the survival rate is basically zero, which is, as you can imagine, not very conducive to being invasive. However, these researchers notice something very interesting. Not only do these Polish cucumbers have the regular four seeds of the North American ones, but they have a fifth seed that we haven't seen in the North American counterparts, actually trapped in sort of a, a mesh bag right in the middle of the cucumber. The mesh bag is present here too, but there's nothing inside of it. And so when those cucumbers dry out, four of those seeds come falling out, like usual, and the one stays, stays trapped inside that bag. And it's actually also a bit of a different seed because it's smaller and lighter than all the others. But it seems to germinate just fine. So to find out whether this was having any effect on the seed dispersal or seed survival, researchers decided to try leaving trays of these exposed seeds and seeds trapped inside of mesh bags just sitting where you would normally find these, these cucumbers growing, generally next to rivers or other bodies of water. So they left those there and then trained a camera on the spot and came back the next day to see what was left. Well, it, it turned out that of these exposed seeds, all of them had been eaten, like 100% in the several times that they tried it. And of the ones in the mesh bags, basically none of them. Some of the rodents that they caught on film actually tried to get into the mesh to get at the seeds, but none of them were successful and apparently decided it wasn't worth the effort. I mean, it makes sense. Why spend more energy than you would actually get from eating this tiny little seed when you're trying to get it out of the bag? So only one seed actually germinated from each fruit, but in a way that actually worked out to the advantage of the cucumber as well. See, if you have, say, two of the seeds survive, sure, you have one extra plant, but at the same time, those two plants are crowding each other, and you have them competing for water, nutrients, light, space, and so, as a result, each one will be less productive than just one on its own would be. So this genetic difference for this five-seeded cucumber, it's if it is present in North America at all, it doesn't appear to be at all common. So, but given the right environmental conditions, here are the predators, this minority's numbers just exploded, and thus invasiveness is born. So on that note, while it may not be edible and it won't make a good trail snack, there is one more fun thing you can do with it. At this stage, the inside holds together fairly well and the screen, skin breaks pretty easily. So if you apply a little bit of pressure, well that was kind of lame, but the, sometimes you can get the inside to just explode and shoot at somebody. They're also good for throwing at people. Spiky, but not enough to hurt. So that's all I have for wild cucumbers, or at least this type. So if you have any corrections, suggestions, or disparaging remarks, feel free to comment down below. And for another less convincing, but ultimately more delicious cucumber imposter, join me next week, or whatever time period I upload these in. Join me next time on Ambling with Sam. 
So I made a little discovery while making this video. The study on the plant's invasiveness said that while it was assumed that it would be found there, the five-seeded cucumber hadn't actually been confirmed in North America. Well, while I was ma videoing myself taking the seeds out of a mature specimen, lo and behold, it turned out I was holding a five-seeded cucumber. Unfortunately, on trying to remove the fifth seed, it immediately shot out and disappeared, and within minutes my camera died and I had to leave for university, so I didn't have time to check other cucumbers in the patch. Bummer. But at least I can confirm that the five-seeded variety is indeed found in North America. Signing off for real this time.